Hey guys, Red here, and please help me introduce Katie Lee. I'm honored. Uh, of course. I mean, you were actually a huge part of my childhood. Really? Well, yeah. I mean, like I told you in person, uh, growing up, whenever I hung out with my grandma, she would put uh, an Odyssey on while we were trying to go to bed or just to relax us during dinner or anything like that. So oh, I'd that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, um, for my audience who may not know who you are and the voices that you've done, uh, would you mind giving a brief summary of your name and some of your most popular voice roles? Oh, sure. Okay. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Katie Lee. Um, Nate, Mr. Red, knows me from Adventures in Odyssey, where I play Connie Kendall. But I've been working in a voiceover business ever since 1980, and I've been known to do the voice of the original <clears throat> Rolf the Dog on the Muppet Babies. I was Sunny Gummy in the Gummy Bears. I was Hulk or Buttlefoot in Darkwing Duck. Uh, and in My Little Pony, I was Fizzy and Baby Sundance. Uh, let's see. Um, right now, I'm on a lot of e-learning. Someone just emailed me today and said, Is that you reading the Dr. Seuss book and the Dr. Seuss... Um, uh, there's, I guess they put it on YouTube, Dr. Seuss Library. Uh, what's it called? I, I'm so glad people people let me know where I can find my stuff, which is always a a treat because we did. Uh, you can find if I ran the zoo on YouTube, you can hear it. But the website, the app is called. I read a few Dr. Seuss stories and what's it called dr seuss treasury um what else the little prince i was dumbo's voice in dumbo circus um i recently on uh, nickelodeon rainbow butterfly unicorn kitty i've been directing animation lately on a lot of youtube shows uh chi chi love is one of the shows and i I voice a little character called Super Zack in the uh, Little Hero Super Z. I'm still working and uh, creating stuff. I ju oh, and I just finished being the voice of Goofus for Highlights Magazine on Audible.com. They're doing highlights um, as an audio thing, and the Goofus and Gallant cartoon, they created a, a series, an eight-part series of episodes, and I got to... Play Goofus's voice. Wow. Yeah, so that was fun. You're still going to full full steam ahead. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, yeah, it is fun. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice. You know, I'm I'm really thankful. I have my own booth and work from home, and I do educational stuff, which I love to do for. Several uh, companies, ABC Mouse, people are familiar with, and uh, another company, Adapted Mind, and I, uh, I just found out an iPad, uh, something called Early Expert that teaches Spanish, where I did the boy and girl voice, brother and sister. Um, some people know me from anime as, from Cap as Captain Blue Jr. on the Beautiful Joe cartoon. Um and some other, what's another anime thing? I don't know. Sometimes I forget. I have to look myself up. <laughs> oh, yes. I if, When you see Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, I revoice the Maharaja in that film. So I'm the, the little kid in the turban who was possessed. Oh, that's fun. Yes. I, too, have heard the rumors of the thuggy cult. I can assure you it will never happen again. In my kingdom. Yeah, I had to do like the voodoo doll thing at the end. Like, <laughs> it's more fun to come up with the sounds than to watch it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, you also played young Han Solo in a Star Wars Lego short? Mm-hmm. On, on uh, Cartoon Network. It was called The Padawan Menace. And I played Han Solo as a kid. Yeah, he says, uh, I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> I honestly, I was looking up, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that was her, because I honestly, I, I liked it growing up, and I'm like, oh, you know, it's kind of cute, kind of cool looking, and didn't realize it was you. 
like at all. I think it's a really funny. It's only thirty minutes, yeah. but it's very funny. Very funny. I actually, when I do go to conventions, I have they have it on Blu-ray or DVD, and they came with his own little Lego, little Han Solo Lego. So I still have some that. I like to take with me if anybody wants to, you know, get a copy and I autograph it. So it's kind of fun to have. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff. Because of um, because we aren't doing conventions, I've revamped my website, katielee.com. That's L-E-I-G-H. And so if people want to buy autograph, pick, you know, like they would normally at a, a convention, um, I'm offering it through my website, even like personalized shout outs, uh, things like that, that people want because we're all kind of stuck inside and, you know, it's a way to make contact. They can email me through my website. I've taught, I've been a presenter like live for a, a classroom <clears throat> for a school because I do like to educate people about what it's like being a voice actor. Um, so Besides the podcast I'm doing with Will, yeah, you can order. And I have a new book. Will and I have a book. I don't know if you're familiar with it called Adventures in Oddity. And we came out with it five years ago, and then we just came out with a bonus edition uh, just before Christmas. And we've added 58 more pages, and we've recorded it. There's an audio version available, and that you can get through our website. And if they people become Patreons, they can watch the video version of us reading the bonus chapters of the new book. And that's kind of fun, too. My husband says, people don't understand how funny you are in person when you react with each other. So they'll get a chance to see that if they want to. Well, speaking of Adventures in Odyssey, I had a couple sub-questions about that. Do you have a favorite story? Do you have a favorite script that you read from Adventures in Odyssey? Or are they all kind of just your favorite? Well, yeah. I mean, there's a few that really stand out that, uh, you know, maybe are more emotional. And you take that away with you. Uh, actually, I was listening over Christmas. We had a listening party. There's a Facebook page, um, a fan ba- page, called the Adventures in Odyssey Club on Facebook. It's a, like a group. And um, another girl, Rose Beasley, who I'm, I'm getting to know all my Odyssey family. And it's so fun because we do feel like family. Rose has created uh, memes and, and clothes with sayings from Odyssey. She's marketing (laughs) clothes. And then she had a listening party, and I think it was Christmas Eve. Um, And I heard a Christmas show. We did Back to Bethlehem, and then there was a part two that I didn't remember hearing. And I thought it was excellent. It was really fun to listen to. There's, you know, we've been doing this 34 years. So if I forget something, you know, I hope I can be forgiven for that. And, it, you know, if it's been a while since I've heard something, um, it's, you know, you hear it again, and it, it's it's really neat. I probably did hear it once before, but it was maybe 20 years ago, maybe even longer, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're doing it more than some, some of your fans' lifetimes. You forget something here or there, you can't be <laughs> Yeah. So... Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I just, I really do enjoy, um, and, and now especially I get sentimental because I miss a lot of the people who've passed away who used to work on this show, and hearing their voices is very dear to me. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, you spent all that time recording with them and spending time with them for them to pass away and then you can hear their voice every so often i'm sure right it's wonderful actually so i'm thankful i'm thankful that i live in a my life pretty much has been recorded you know and i'm grateful for that because you don't think about it at the time but when time passes it sure is nice to you know be reminded Yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, going to the Adventures of Odyssey uh, and listening to you guys again has definitely reminded me of so many memories from my childhood, just listening to you guys and spending time with grandparents, one of which I can't do anymore, so it's definitely Uh. a memory to have. 
Yeah, yeah. And it means so much to so many people. We get letters all the time, and it's just so, it's such a blessing to hear what it means to people and how lives have been changed. And we all want God to use us. Well, I think I always did, you know, to benefit other people. And, you know, obviously I couldn't have had the impact on so many lives by myself, but being a part of the show um, is is an opportunity to be a part of something really, really long lasting and profound. Yeah. Um, did you did you know that it would blow up the way it has when it first started? Oh heck no, no, <laughs> no. I mean, the third year we recorded, I was like, aren't we done with this? We're doing it again, really? Another year? Okay. And now. I got a session booked at the end of this month. We're, you know, 34 years later. Wow. Um, well, with all these years, uh, is there any script that you've read that you didn't think that the audience would like at all, but you were surprised by the audience's reaction? Oh. Hmm. That's an interesting question. Nobody's asked me that before. Um, I... I think, I mean, is there anything I thought they wouldn't like? No. I mean, I think the stuff I thought maybe people, I mean, you know, you have to remember something, Nate. We've only had social media for what, like eight years? Like, you don't know what people think. We didn't know. I didn't know. Maybe people at Focus did if they wrote letters, but they didn't show us all their letters, right? So that information, ideas, and, and opinions weren't shared as easily as they are these days. Um, but I think, uh, no, I, I think some of the shows maybe that, there are some shows, episodes that I thought didn't thrill me, but thrilled other people. And that's what's great because, you know, we appeal to a wide audience. Um, you know, not every, there's always something for everybody. I think, in Odyssey. Another question is, um, you guys have had guest voice actors on to voice uh, little characters here and there, haven't you guys? Um, all the time. Is there any guests that you could believe that came on? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, um, yeah. I mean... We had, uh, well, in the beginning, we weren't using union actors, and then we became union, so we could have anybody we wanted, and when I was a kid growing up, there was a show, like a soap opera, I didn't really care for it, but it was called Dark Shadows, and one of the actors from that show came on Odyssey, and that was interesting, it was a, I mean, he didn't play a vampire on Odyssey, but he was a kind of a bad guy. Um, that was fun. I mean, a lot of famous people have worked on Odyssey. Greg Jabara come in, who was Wit's friend. I mean, he works on, I think, NYPD Blue or something in New York. There are a lot of stage actors. Um, I don't see a lot of television, so I, I don't know everything that's on TV. But, I mean, I'm really impressed that they want to work with us. A big selection of very talented people. One person I wish who would come on uh, is John Christ. Because I heard he was once, but I didn't work with him. Or if I did, I don't remember. But now I think he's funny, so I'd like him to come on. <laughs> Is there any actor that came on that acted unlike you thought they would? Like, acted mean to any of the writers or other voice actors or anything like that? Oh, no. Mm -mm. Nope. We have a great atmosphere. Even people who are used to working in the secular world really appreciate working on Odyssey. They all comment on how they like the atmosphere that we work in. Fair enough. Uh, I just wasn't sure because I know there is some actors that act like out they're all dying a bag of chips and they just recently started so they really know nothing. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, for the most part, people are very nice, and especially voice actors are the best, like, they're the cream of the crop of actors anyway. 
as far as I'm concerned. We're much, I think we're more down to earth. And I, people always think, you know, actors are walk around with their noses in the air, and that isn't necessarily true. And like I said, especially for voice actors. So, you know, I think a lot of people who may listen to this podcast are think they want to be actors, but they're afraid, you know, that they're going to, I don't know, get in being involved with a horrible group of people and and I want to assure you that isn't true I mean there's always you know people we don't like but you're going to find people you don't like working at the post office right I mean that's absolutely true you're going to find people you don't like no matter what it's especially if you're looking for them but our job is to be light right no matter what and is there any stories that you thought nothing of at one point and then later in life hit you with nostalgia and you thought about it and you went, holy crap, how did I miss this? Oh, yeah. Uh, but if I, I probably can't tell you the titles. But, it, yeah, it happens a lot. Even, like I said, that Christmas story, I was really... Um, and, and That was a great one. That second part two, part, you know, back to Bethlehem or whatever they called the second one. Yeah, it was really good I mean I'm I get and I and I think maybe I didn't appreciate the writing at the time I was recording it and then when I listen back I think dang this is really good yeah um they do even we got we're listening to snow day and just hearing what my son sounded like when he was 12 was amazing because you forget (laughs) it was like wow that's you know, and the story was because first you're sometimes you're just listening to your own performance, you know, and then as time goes by, you're just listening to the story and realize how good they are. Um, I think that and, and as I get older, too, and hear what people have to say and what the episodes mean to them, then it makes me appreciate, um, you know, I want to hear them again. Because I didn't probably didn't really appreciate them at the time they were made. How many kids do you have? Well, um, there's five kids in our family, but they're all grown up. As I'm on my second marriage, so we have a blended family. So there's five. Um, I started out with three. Now I have five. Don't you love how mouth works? <laughs> well, I love them all. Well, besides the one that came in that you mentioned a little bit ago, was has any of your other uh, family come in to be guest roles or whatnot? No. No. I tried. I wanted my daughter to do it. It never worked out for her, although she has worked with Phil Lawler on another project. Um, but I, no. I mean, unless she did baby voices once, baby sounds, I don't think so. No, just the oldest, Adam. I wasn't sure. I know sometimes when uh, mothers or fathers are into a project, they bring their kids in. in, in uh, yep. If it's not just, hey, you're comfortable. Like uh, Maleficent, the uh, the new movie that turned the bad guy from some beauty into a good guy. Do you know which movie yeah. I'm talking about? The daughter, the little Aurora, was actually Maleficent's daughter. Oh, really? Yeah. It was actually rather interesting because what it was was all the other kids that came in, once she put the horns on, was scared of Maleficent. But the little girl just looked and said, oh, it's mom. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's neat to be. I used to take my kids all the time to work with me, but they weren't working on the show. I would just bring them with me. Sounds rather fun, to be honest. Yep. It was. And Dave Madden used to do magic tricks for them when he was around. It was fun. Wow. Um, so you uh-huh. were the you were the voice of Ralph for um what, all Muppet Baby content? All Muppet content? Yes. Well, yeah, until the new incarnation of the show. Okay. Um, how did you come up with that voice? Well, I watched the Muppets and uh, just tried to imitate his personality and voice. Sounds simple, right? Yeah. Well. 
Well, I really <laughs> love like I love that character. I grew up I grew up watching him and I loved him. So, it kind of uh, I just related to him and I I I came I just thought how does he sound? I was watching the Muppets Take Manhattan before my audition. So, you know, there's a scene where he's barking to the dogs, the guard dogs, and he says, it pays to know a second language. And I just, <laughs> I just kind of use, use that as my springboard to find a voice, you know. Because obviously I don't sound like Jim Henson, but my imitation sounded like a baby Jim, or a baby Rolf. So, I got lucky. Now, you had mentioned anime roles uh, when we were starting out. Uh, what ones have you done? That I was uh, Captain Blue Jr. and Beautiful Joy. I played Noe in Blue Dragon. Oh, oh, and of course I was in the last um, uh, Sailor Moon. I played uh, Sailor Iron Mouse. Is there any voice acting roles that you've done that surprised you how well it came out after post? Yeah! This last show that we did, Chi Chi Love, because I was directing it, and the animation was done in Sweden, so we laid down the tracks. It's original. I couldn't tell from the animatics what it would really look like, and I was really delighted when I saw it on YouTube. It looks great. Um, I do another kids program called Mamalu that's on YouTube for kids, M-O-M-O-L-U. I play... Mamalu, I do his voice and uh, the fox as well, and that's really great. I think animation is getting a lot easier, and it's just looking better and better. And people do a great job. We did. Um, there's a huge. I, I worked also on a cartoon called Dungeons and Dragons, and I played Sheila, the thief. And there's a huge fan base for that show still even though it was done in the 80s, and the, the last script was never produced, and the fans have actually animated the last script. And they've done an amazing job. It's incredible. There's a, on the Facebook page, uh, Ryan Need animated it and had us read, send him some voices. Like my daughter, oh, well, my daughter played, she read for Diana's voice because no one can find the original Diana anymore. So she read her lines and used a microphone I gave her and recorded in a van, the, the dialogue, and he put it on. And the whole thing looks great and sounds great. Me and my roommate was actually just talking about that show the other day. And he's like, I really want to be able to find some way of watching it. I'm like, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. And I looked at IMDb and I'm like, well, that's all the convenient. We were just talking yeah. About this. Yeah. Same director we had for Muppet Babies directed that show. Wow. And Willie Ames was on Dungeons and Dragons. And I saw him in Florida the last convention we went to. We did a Dungeons and Dragons panel. And oddly enough, he became Bible Man. How long have you been a Christian? I think since I was about 25 or 26. Oh, so uh, a few years then. A few years, yeah. Back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. When we were doing Dungeons and Dragons, actually. Is there any role that you've turned down because of your belief and your, and your faith? Well, yeah, there's things I don't care to audition for. So it's not like I they they offer it to me and I say no because that wouldn't be that wouldn't have any integrity. So I if there's something that I think doesn't seem quite right, I won't audition for it. Um, and I used to do I used to work on a Buffy the Vampire Slayer in post production and this other one Angel, which I guess are some Christians like Phil Lawler. He thought it was incredibly well written but I never watched the show but I didn't like working on it because I didn't I'm very I don't like to put things in my head that I don't want to see so I stopped working on that so then I, I, I remember telling my agent I don't want to work on any horror movie trailers a long time ago but that's just me you know oh sorry um uh, what were you doing on Buffy and Angel? Post-production, we do um, 
loop group stuff where you go in and you do the background voices, you know, stuff that they don't record by the principal actors, you know, party scenes or, you know, restaurants or, you know, school campus stuff. Things like that. Okay, that makes sense. Um, well, I, another reason I ask is I know some Christians aren't a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, and with your work on there, I didn't know if that had anything to do with uh, if that stopped you on working on it or if that stopped you on playing with it. Or well, I that. thought about not working on it. It was very, you know, I'm writing in my autobiography right now, Voice of Your Childhood, and... Um, that was a very hard time in my life because it was clear that um, in the Christian world, people had someone had written a book about how basically all cartoons were demonic, which m made me feel like my whole career was, you know, working for the devil. And then I had to kind of wrestle with that, and especially on Dungeons and Dragons because everybody thought that was bad. Uh, or a lot of people did. And it's so funny because, I mean, it's so, yeah, to answer your question, I struggled a lot with that, um, if I should be doing it at all. Okay. And then um, I worked through that. And I, you know, I realized, you know, <clears throat> depending on what the show is, you know, I, I see it from the script. And I know what we're doing. You know, some people just look at a, a cover of a book and think they know what's inside of it. And they're, you know, that's not right. Um, a lot of people find really good lessons and things. And you can't have any drama without protagonists. So, you know, Narnia. How about that, right? So you've got, or, or um, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings, not all of it's pretty, right? But there's good stories. And it's funny because now I run into people in their 30s who weren't allowed to watch Dungeons & Dragons as kids who watch it now and they play the game. And, and I never played the game. But they they don't see anything wrong with it. But it was a, we had a very alarmist reaction to things back in the 80s that I don't know was particularly wise tell you the truth um but i don't know anyway yes i did struggle with that to answer your question but it was like you know the first series really good series i got to be on and we're in this business to make money right yeah. and i'm not saying oh yeah i'm selling out it's not like you know i was playing somebody who was walking around naked or something it's you know it was and i I don't know. Sometimes you just have to pick your battles. But my, I guess my point was, too, is that my job is to, as a believer, is to minister to all the people that I'm with every day, you know, not just Christians. And we're called to be light in the world and, you know, be there for everybody. And so our work environment, you know, if if. If all Christians abandoned everything in Hollywood, it would be horrible. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot, um, a lot of Christians like to judge things based on what they hear here or there, and that's in my mind, you need to make the decision yourself and not let others make it for you. But that's me. I mean, and sometimes we make decisions that we regret. You know, nobody's perfect. Do you have a favorite story from a table read that you've done? Mm, not necessarily a table read, but when I was working on Babe, Pig in the City, um, I was hired to be the little chimpanzee, and I that's what I was hired to do, and we were doing his lines, and then we got to the scene with this little kitten, and I asked the director, oh, can I do the kitten's voice? And he said, sure, and then they ended up replacing me as the chimp, but I'm still in the movie as the kitten's voice. Have any other... Uh... Do you have any questions that you wish were asked to you that you would love to give an answer to but haven't been asked? No, I don't really even like answering questions that much. <laughs> oh, noted. Okay. No, um, I'm kidding. But, um, no. Uh, you know, if somebody asks me, uh, I don't know. They're going to send me something to eat. What I like to eat. That's always a good question. 
question. <laughs> my favorite question is, are you available to work on this project? That's my favorite question. That's a very good question. Yeah, I'm going to be, I actually worked at Lamplighter in June on a new series, Lamplighter Ministries, uh, called The Hidden Hand, and I got to play the lead role, and that was wonderful. I, I didn't think I qualified to work over there because they're far away, and that worked out. Um, and I'm going to be working on a new pilot with Darby Kern and Randy Strew called The Watch, and they're the ones that did um, the Jake Muller detective recording. So, you know, I just love meeting new people um, and working on new things. But, yeah, I guess, yeah, I do wish, that's a question, just am I available? Because a lot of people assume... I'm not, and I'll, I don't know if I'll get a million emails, but sometimes people will email me through my website, and they think they're writing my secretary, which I do not have, and I will write them back, and they're always surprised. Um, or I guess one question might be, if I could change one thing in the world, one of my big campaigns is I wish every doctor's office, especially pediatricians, had glucometers in their office and understood type 1 diabetes because my daughter is a type 1 diabetic. And actually, she has a wonderful Instagram page called You're Just My Type, and she tells stories of other diabetics. But it's the most misdiagnosed disease, and all doctors need is one drop of blood to know if a child is diabetic or not. And they, a lot of doctors don't know that. And they give them away, these glucometers. And I wish that all the office, all the producers of glucometers, those are the things that read your blood sugar, would just give every pediatrician one. And if they suspect any kind of anything that, you know, even a flu or... Something that possibly, if a child's really thirsty or has to go to the bathroom very frequently, that they would just find out in a, they'd find out in ten seconds if that person's diabetic or not, if that kid is. And I wish that um, if I could do something to make that happen, I would feel so happy. So many children almost die because their doctors don't understand. And if they could find out, so they could they go put them through batteries of tests that are so unnecessary. Gotcha. And that's in America. Yeah. And if they could get the price of insulin down and just stop jacking it up so people can afford to live, that would be very nice too. So there's my political, that's my political view on the one thing that's it that's what i care about the most i understand that i understand that completely um and i've never talked about it before so you're the first podcast Woo! <laughs> uh, cool that's true um yeah i think that is all my questions i have for you um so thank you again for coming on I do really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Oh, of course, of course. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. I will leave descriptions for all of Katie Lee's stuff down when, b below in the description. Her website. Yes, stuff, please. Uh, www. Here, I'll say www.katielee.com and look up uh, Adventures in Oddity. It's available through my website. We'll, as soon as I figure out our Patreon, we'll be doing Tell You Later podcast, which will be fun, featuring Will and me on camera, uh, which is a lot of fun and lots of music. And what else? And the audio version that's available. And if anybody, you know, I'm here. If you want me to work, I'm here. <laughs> all right uh thank you guys for tuning in and i'll see you guys later goodbye thank you